Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Uh, anyway, um, uh, hi everyone. Um, I want to talk about two new extensions that I created or co-created um, uh, in the last six months or so. Uh, page exchange and flex diagrams. Uh, so the first one is page exchange. Uh, you can find it at that uh, link. Let me show you the thing. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Just wanted to make sure everything was fine there. Um, yeah, here's the page for it. Um, it was first released in May, uh, which I guess was six months ago. <clears throat> I I like to abbreviate it PX. I don't know. We'll see what how pe what people refer to it as. Um, it's basically a, a sort of a, a package manager. Um, if you've heard of Yum or Apt, and I only vaguely know them, I just know them because sometimes you have to call them on Linux. Um, it's supposed to be like that, but for but where the packages are just a collection of wiki pages. Um, so yeah, a package is a group of wiki pages that are meant to be used together. I mean, the the uh, the obvious usage is data structures, where that can be templates, forms, categories, uh, properties. In the case of Semantic Media Wiki, they can also be regular pages. It's I mean, essentially whatever combination of pa packages you want, pages you want to uh, uh, group together. Uh, interestingly, you can also include uh, JS and CSS pages. Uh, and those will then get loaded on every page load, and I'll show a, an example of that. Um, so the way you put it together is you create a JSON file, and there's a specific syntax you can follow, uh, which I'll show. You can put that anywhere on the web. Uh, that that uh, explains you know, what this package is, the author, the version number, because you can have versioning, uh, and, um, and then the, you know, links to the wiki text for each of those pages. Uh, and then a user who wants to um, receive, uh, install that pa package just has to uh, put that JSON file, uh, the, the URL of that JSON file in their local settings.php file. And actually one JSON file can define more than one package, but that's a minor detail. Uh, so let me show it in action. Um, here is the, uh, the the special page. It's called special packages that pa page exchange defines. And here it is on my wiki, Discourse DB. Uh, most of these are fake. Some of these are real. I'll, I'll show you. Um, so the packages are grouped into three uh, headings, three groupings, I guess. There's the installed ones, the ones you've already installed. They're the ones that are available. I'll show some of these. Uh, and then there are the the... Oh, there's, sorry, there's four. The non-matching ones, meaning something is something seems to be wrong and it, it doesn't seem like uh, this is usable. Uh, uh, yeah, in this case, it's because uh, these packages, this is sort of, a, sort of a demonstration of the functionality. This isn't real, but, um, uh, oh no, this is real. This actually happens to be real. Um, you can have one package require another package, just like you know, um, libraries in the real world or, or MediaWiki extensions to require one another. Um, so in this case, these two packages require packages that are available but not installed, so, so, so they can't be installed for that reason. Unusable means it really can't be installed. In this case, uh, it's because it, uh, it it's a semantic media wiki thing. This this wiki doesn't have semantic media wiki installed, uh, so it's basically saying that there's a this it doesn't know what this property namespace is, so it can't uh, install this thing. So um, yeah, so so um, so yeah. Briefly, let me show the CSS thing because that's pretty interesting. Um, there's this random uh, fake one I put together called Smiley Face. It just it just illustrates that you can you can have an image or or any number of images as part of your package. Um, oh, okay, yeah, fine. 
Right. And, the, and, and a, a, an image includes both the actual image and the text of that page. So here's the, uh, the image and this is all part of the package. Uh, this also includes these test JavaScript and CSS um, pages. And so this is that CSS page. It just defines this class. So here's an example of the uh, class actually being used. So basically what it means is if you have a, a JavaScript or CSS page in your package, then uh, page exchange will make sure that it gets loaded on every uh, page load uh, in the wiki. So it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a, it's a lightweight way to, uh, to, uh, define, uh, custom CSS and JavaScript that you want to, to, uh, add, uh, you know, as part of a package, uh, that you want to enable within wikis. Um, so yeah, there's these installed ones. Um, this one, this, it says there's a more recent version of this package than the one currently installed on this wiki. Um, if I click on that, it, I can see the differences here. The, um, this is, this is fake, but uh, hopefully you can get the idea that, that uh, an external package can keep getting updated much as you know, any piece of software can, and then you, the administrator, can see that and, and uh, keep up with the uh, latest versions. Um, what did I want to show? Yeah, OK, so, so these are actual real life demos uh, for the extension. And you can find them here in this uh, GitHub repository. Um, so actually, it's interesting. It's wiki text, but it's defined, in this case, within GitHub. So you can see here an example of, uh, of a JSON file that defines these packages. And here, you can see examples of the actual wiki text um, that would go into these packages. So I hope this works. I'm just going to briefly, quickly do a demo here. Um, I put this together. There's, there's no company called Super Wiki Consultants. Oh, that's a pretty good name. OK, I think I, I hope I just installed it. Yeah, OK, there it is. Did that work? OK, cool. So I just installed this. Well, OK, this brings me to the uh, to the, just the wiki text. But if I go here, now I have this meeting form. And I can, uh, I can fill it out and that I have a, an instant data structure. I don't have to use any of the, I don't have to know anything about, in this case, uh, page forms or, or template markup. Or I, I don't even have to know about the, uh, the various helper tools for creating these things. I just need to click Install, and somebody else has done all the work. Um, Provided this is fine and I don't want to change anything, of course. So yeah, that's page exchange. Um, I guess I might as well move on and oh, okay. Well, let me answer these questions briefly while we're on the subject. Can it handle conflicts defined by different packages? Yes, and actually, um, the way that's done is that in addition to the actual name, here, let me show the, the SMW one. In addition to the actual name of the package, each package also gets a so-called global ID, which has to be unique. If there's a conflict, then there's really a problem there. But the idea is it uses this you know, sort of the standard, I forget the term for it, but uh, it's, a, it's a standard naming system that tries to, to make sure that there's never any uh, conflicts. Um, JSON pages, and then Brian's question, JSON pages and images could be stored in GitHub. Yes, definitely. They can be put anywhere. Um, and there's, there's valid reasons for not wanting to, to store it within a wiki, because then you know if something changes, and if, if you accidentally make some change, then everyone will get that change, or potentially. Um, can it handle a public wiki that requires user to log on as a source? Uh, no, it has to be truly public. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be an interesting feature. I guess that's the same question as, uh, as the next one. It, uh, the, no, it, it just uses the web to uh, get stuff. But what you can do is do so-called security through obscurity and just you know only, only let the right people know about the specific URL if you want. Um, 
And no, you can't define on what pages the custom CSS and JS loads on. It'll always get loaded on every page, uh, I guess, potentially. I mean, I don't know. It's an interesting, uh, um, uh, my, uh, you know, additional feature modification. Um, okay. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, all right. I'll, I'll move on to the next thing. Uh, feel free to, to have, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to uh, put them there. Um, uh, yeah, so potential uses, uh, as I said, it's a, it's a way to, uh, to, 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 I mean, this is really the primary thing I think is a, a way to, to, to create or distribute reusable data structures, especially when you're using semantic media week or cargo. Um, and that's really, especially for anyone in the media wiki business, whether that's companies or individual consultants or whatever, um, this ties into something that, uh, Richard Heigl was talking about, uh, in the opening talk, I think, um, just the idea of having these um, um, <laughs> data structures as products that uh, that can be distributed. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was the initial thinking behind this, that, that there's, there needs to be some kind of mechanism, and hopefully this is a good enough mechanism for that to do the actual distribution so people don't have to, you know, do big copy and pastes and all that. Um, uh, alternatively, if you just run one big set of wikis, uh, and you want them all to have the same data structures or same anything else, then this is a way to do that internally, um, and just define it in one place. And then, I mean, it's kind of annoying if you have a hundred wikis to, to have to go to special packages in each one and do the install. Maybe there are better ways, but this is one way to do it. Um, yeah, so this so it's interesting that the use of uh, JavaScript and CSS uh, especially can can make this potentially an alternative to an extension or skin. I mean, there's a bunch of extensions that are basically just a wrapper around some third party JavaScript library. I mean, you could just have a little bit of JavaScript or CSS specifically for your data structure, but alternatively, you could ha just have you could have it as a real include a real JavaScript library within your package. Uh, and same with skin and the CSS. If you just want, you know, a, a, something like vector, but a little bit different, then this is potentially one way to uh, do that. And so on. There's a bunch of other things. Okay, moving, moving on. Uh, okay, cool. Um, moving on. Flex diagrams. Uh, this is yeah. You can see it here. Um, it lets users define, edit, and display diagrams. Uh, right now, there's three supported diagram formats. There's uh, BPMMN, Gantt Charts, and Mermaid, which is which is a specific uh, library, uh, but it's pretty neat. Um, uh, if you were there at the actual, I mean, the, the in-person SMWCon last year, you probably remember I showed a demo of it. It should have been released you know, a month or two after that, but uh, things got sidetracked. Uh, it was finally released in July with uh, with a lot of help from a guy named uh, Sahaj Sahaj Kondalwal, who may or may not be watching this. I don't know, uh, but uh, shout out to him. Um, uh, each diagram type gets its own name namespace. I'll show that. So, so there are three different namespaces defined right now, and then on the diagram page, there's an edit diagram tab. Uh, in each case. And then you can also uh, display diagrams elsewhere in the wiki using this display diagram parser function. Uh, one other neat feature, which wasn't there in the demo last year, if you, in case you remember that one, is uh, that now elements can be links to, so I'll, I'll show an, an example of that um, in use. And then finally, there's uh, cargo storage of BPMN and Gantt data, and I'll show that later. Uh, and potentially there could be semantic media wiki storage as well, but that's not, that's, hasn't been implemented. Okay. So let me show this. Okay. So here's a BPMN chart. If you don't know about BPMN, I, I didn't really know about it either before I started with this, but it's, po it's popular in the business world. Apparently, um, it's just a flow chart kind of thing. Um, uh, so yeah, you can see these are links here. If I click on this, hopefully this works. Cool. It it I mean you can link it to any other wiki page. In this case, it links to a, a BPMN, another BPMN diagram. Clearly, I 
don't really that I just made this. I don't really know, uh, uh, you know, what a good BPMN diagram looks like. Um, yeah, you can zoom in and out. That's a cool feature. Uh, and here's the uh, diagram edit capability so you know uh, this is really cool it's a it's a it's a it's a really neat uh, open source javascript library um that lets you very easily create and edit uh, bpmn diagrams so then if i if i hit save it would uh, show up well, i might as well hit save uh you may be wondering how those links are implemented it's it's a little bit of a hack but basically if you put within the text uh, related to, to each element, if you put uh, something that looks like a, a link, a, a wiki text link, then it will, uh, in, you know, interpret that as being a link and link to that page. Um, let me save this. Hopefully this will work. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Um, okay, so that was BPMN. Similarly, there's Gantt charts. This is for project management. Um, I made this up. Uh, this is not real. Same thing here. I can, uh, you know, I can edit it. And that, this actually uses uh, a, that's another open source JavaScript library that's also really nicely done. Um, Yeah, you can do, well, okay. You can do all sorts of things. Uh, you know, and save it and so forth, and it'll show up. And then, oh, uh, well, as you might imagine, the, the, it shows up in, in the, the version history. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's really the, 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 the important part of this as opposed to, you know, just creating BPMN diagrams. I mean, there's, there's any number of ways you can create P, uh, BPMN diagrams or anything else, but, but the fact that there's a version history, I, I think, makes this unique among, uh, you know, solutions for diagrams. Um, and, of course, that just comes from being part of MediaWiki. Uh, here's mermaid. Here's a sample diagram that I found online somewhere on mermaid. Unfortunately, though, it's really nice. It lacks an editor. Uh, uh, there's no, uh, there's no open source mer graphical mermaid editor, but this is, this is the next best thing, I guess. It's basically, it's basically a previewer thing. So, uh, you know, if I, if I, type here it'll show up in real time so you can at least see what it's going to look like you can see that uh, green uh, rectangle expanding okay well uh yeah this is the beginning of uh the second part of my talk after i got cut out uh unfortunately so uh yeah so the, the, um, there was uh there were gantt charts um <laughs> and this is the um uh, editing interface for Gantt charts, which uh, you may have seen a little bit, bit of, of, but uh, it's as you would expect, you can do, you can, you know, you can create Gantt charts uh, with this and create new tasks and all that, uh, uh, all that kind of stuff. And then if I were to hit save again, then uh, it would, as you would expect, it would show up correctly. Um, Mermaid is the third of the currently supported uh, diagram format. It's just a JavaScript library that I think is pretty popular. Uh, there's even a, an extension for it already, a Mermaid extension, and there's a semantic media wiki result format or something like that uh, that uses Mermaid. Um, it's different from the other two in that it doesn't have a, uh, a dedicated uh, graphical editor, unfortunately. That's, uh, that's something that I wish someone would create. Um, but instead, there's something that hopefully is is useful, uh, which is just a live uh, dem a live uh, preview of whatever you type. So, um, uh, so if I type here, you can see that it's changing and so forth. So then, if I were to save this, it would show up as it does here. So it's a little better than just typing in text blindly, uh, maybe not blindly, but uh, with no uh, uh, no idea what it'll look like. Um, yeah, so uh, I can save it, I guess. <clears throat> okay, yeah, there's the new text. Um, 
And here is uh, an example of a diagram being displayed elsewhere on the wiki. You can see this is not a BPMN page, it's just a regular page. And if I click edit, you can see it calls this display diagram function. Um, so yeah, you can display diagrams in any combination anywhere on the wiki. Uh, this came up a little during the questions already, but um, <clears throat> uh, there is a tie-in with Cargo uh, where it's, it uh, automatically stores information on BPMN and Gantt charts into their own tables. Um, <clears throat> so here's the BPMN table, uh, and it stores... The, a lot of this doesn't look that interesting, but it, it basically stores each element uh, a row for each element, including the text and so forth, so you could potentially query it. I don't know how useful uh, this is. Uh, same thing with Gantt charts. This may be more useful because these, I don't know, these correspond to uh, real life events, so there, there may be more of a need for this information. So potentially it could, pr it could prevent you from having to uh, enter duplicate information, you know, have a se separate pages for each event and then also have this Gantt chart thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and potentially there could be a, a, a semantic media wiki storage for this that, that has the same, uses the same concept with, uh, with special properties. Um, it's a different approach than cognitive process designer has, or for that matter, uh, any sort of, I don't know if there are any Gantt chart results formats, but, but that kind of, that's the kind of mentality that, that, that um, Semantic Media Wiki and, and Cargo have, which is you store everything in those that system and then use result formats to display it. Here it's the other way around. You use a, a dedicated editor to, to uh, edit everything and then you can potentially also store it in a way that's queryable. I think this makes more sense for this kind of graphical stuff because it's, there's just so much, especially with BPMN, I mean, there's this so much information contained in a chart like this that it's it becomes just um, very hacky to try to store it all as semantic data and, uh, and you know, reconstruct a diagram based off of that. Um, and I think that's it. Um, uh, yeah, okay, cool. It's cool that uh, extracting information uh, is useful. Right, there is a Gantt chart format. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an alternate approach. Sometimes it maybe depends in part on the complexity of the data. Um, uh, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think with more complex data, especially for BPMN, maybe for Gantt charts as well, it, it makes really makes more sense to uh, just use a standard editor. Um, uh, uh, Alexander asks, uh, is there so much reuse in the code base that it's better to have all diagram types instead of sep in, in one instead of separate extensions? I think so. I mean, it's the same concept for all of them, which is each diagram type gets its own namespace and gets the edit diagram tab, and then you have display diagram for all of them. Uh, yeah, I think it. I think it makes a lot of sense to group them all together. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, sure. And and I generally like having, um, you know. Uh, framework type of solutions as as with external data for example um rather than a you know a lot of little ex smaller extensions um uh yeah what else um was there yeah i think i, I think i mostly went through everything before um oh is there a way of dealing with edit conflicts not no uh, I think in this case, um, yeah, it's interesting. The save, the save button here looks like a regular save button, but it's, but the mechanism is totally different. Uh, so I think this doesn't look, doesn't notice edit conflicts at all. It basically will just save whatever you have on the page. So you'll just overwrite any changes without even knowing about it, which is not ideal, of course. Um, but hopefully you can figure that out at some point <laughs> that that happened. Um, 
someone else, someone I, I remember uh, someone asked about exporting it previously and, and I, I answered the question but I was just talking to myself I think uh, but basically there's no export mechanism but it what what shows up in the page is just the syntax of the thing so um, so you could just you know copy paste or whatever it is to uh, to set to put that into uh, some other system maybe that's good enough um right yeah there are some there are some um uh useful tools that are in bpmn.io that would be good to add to the bpmn handling here uh one of which is uh saving to an image uh which it's i think is possible to do it just you just need to add the button for it or something svg right right um the, uh someone uh, someone asked about the two bpmn extensions i guess i assume the other one is cognitive process designer i'm not sure actually or are you talking about bpmn.io i don't know um probably cognitive process designer since that's an extension i i can't i don't see how they could uh how they could interoperate but i don't know um, <clears throat> I mean, it's, you know, different uh, approaches to creation and display of diagrams. Yeah. I see that um, there is a growing demand for, um, for, for the support of, of such graphical um, yeah, interfaces. Draw IO is, is, is another one. Uh, with uh, bpmn.io, uh, we have oh yeah, we have something right. like, like um, uh, something like uh, let's say uh, from Kamunda. It's ca coming from Kamunda. I, I think it's it's an open source uh, software from Kamunda, and they I know they are offering much more services, and I I will we will see that becomes more and more important. Um, that you just go on a page and, and say, as you said, uh, I just want now um, add a, a square or a line or an, an error or something like that and create flowcharts and um, within a certain standardized manner, mostly. Um, so we use, we internally use um, Draw.io a lot and, uh, but I, I'm sure there will pop up more solutions in the future.